so far we have seen about two conversation technique the first one being adding a dominant pole and the second one is moving a dominant pole in the first case we added a larger capacitor at the output node to create a dominant pole towards the origin but this process generally limits the bandwidth of the system by adding an extra pole to the system transfer function whereas in the second case which is the moving dominant pole where we moved an existing dominant pole towards the low frequency thereby leading to bandwidth reduction without adding any extra pole but this second method also requires the knowledge of the internal circuitry of the op amp and in both these cases in order to move or to create a dominant pole they both require a larger capacitor to do the job okay today we will discuss about the third compensation technique which is nothing but the miller's compensation technique this is the technique which is widely used in the ic design but before we begin the discussion about this miller compensation technique uh, we will review about the effects of zeros uh, with respect to both step response in the time domain and the frequency response in the frequency domain so we will spend some time reviewing the effect of zeros in this first part of the miller compensation technique video while the second part of the video will actually discuss about the miller compensation technique so let's begin by considering a zero of the system that is defined as something like out of this the alpha factor is actually is defined as a proportionality constant okay now the value of this proportionality constant generally ranges from 1 all the way to say for example 1000 okay so so the minimum value that it can have is is 1 and it can go to a larger positive value whereas the factor zeta signifies the damping factor which we have already discussed when we discussed about the frequency response right and the third term which is nothing but the omega n which signifies the natural frequency term note that there is a negative sign which signifies that this zero lies on the left half of the system s plane okay so what i really mean here is if i consider the s plane for the system then this zero is actually lying on the left half of the s plane okay so let me consider a second order lti system so normally we know that as a general second order system could be returned so what we do here is we will try to multiply and divide this omega n square so that the expression would right now would become so this is a system that we have already discussed in our previous frequency response of a second order lti system right so now to this system i am going to have a zero so what i am going to do is i am just going to add this zero to my transfer function of my system so our expression would just get modified into something like this now i'm just going to normalize this transfer function that i have defined where i have a single zero in my system and due to the second order denominator polynomial we have two poles in our system okay so i'm just going to normalize this whole transfer function by letting the value of omega n to be equal to 1 so when i do so our transfer function would just get modified as so this is our normalized transfer function okay after letting this omega n to be equal to 1 now let me split this transfer function the normalized transfer function into two components okay the first part of the expression i'm going to denote it with a not of s whereas the second part 
of this expression I am going to denote with a term which is AD of S. Now, A naught of S is nothing but our normalized second order LTI system which contains two poles in the system. Whereas the second term when we take a closer look it almost reflects an identical expression that what we had in our A naught of S except for two terms the first term being this 1 upon alpha times that of zeta and the second term is the factor S that is sitting at the top. So in general the 1 upon alpha times that of zeta could be basically visualized as a gain term if at all if this alpha times that of zeta is less than 1 the value of this particular term if it is less than 1 then the the term 1 upon alpha times that of zeta would generally act as a gain term whereas on the other case when this particular term is larger than the value of 1 then this particular term would act as a kind of attenuation term okay so depending on the magnitude of this alpha times that of zeta it either acts as a gain term or act as a kind of attenuation term now let us come back to this second term which is the s term in the numerator this s term has a significance in the inverse laplace transform do you remember the significance of s when it is taken an inverse laplace transform hope you know the answer but still i will reveal the answer to further continue our discussion the s in this numerator is equivalent to a differentiation in the inverse laplace transform right so what we are actually doing here is that i can visualize this ad of s is actually returned as something like the s times that of a naught of s where we know that the s is nothing but a differentiation operation in the time domain or in other words i can rewrite in terms of time domain that is the ad the response produced by the second part is nothing but the derivative of the first response okay so the equivalence of these two expression is being reflected onto this we have already discussed about the step response of this a naught of s term right so now let me try to reflect the same by drawing the response okay so before that i am going to assume that the value of zeta is considered to be equal to 0.5 we can assume that the poles are complex conjugate and when the poles are complex conjugate then the system response in general will have both oscillatory and exponentially decaying factor so due to which i am trying to reflect the same so assume that this is my zero and when there is a step response at the input then the output of a second order LTI system would would grow exponentially and then settles down to the final value after some some time so as you could able to see that there is an exponential as well as a decaying factor that both combines to produce the response of the output of a second order LTI system where there is no zero in it so now I'm going to label the step response with v naught of t okay now I just want to plot function which is nothing but the derivative of my v naught of t okay so which which is basically reflected from our previous expression okay due to the s term we are performing a derivative on this v naught of t term okay so let me uh, have this color to represent v d of t so as we know that there is a kind of rate of change in my output expression due to which it goes and since at this particular point between this particular segment of my uh, response you could be able to see that the rate at which it, the output changes is generally minimum so due to which it all the way steps down and comes back to a value of zero and then since there is a kind of negative slope in this case so we end up going towards negative value and then now this is what this is the kind of response that i would get okay and now the total response which is defined as v of t 
response that is produced by a second order LTI system containing only two poles plus the derivative term of the of them which is Vd of t okay so generally the response is a combination of both V0 of t and Vd of t right and let me draw this total response just by adding both these responses as we know that when I try to add the magnitude of this one would generally rise up to a large value and after then the response would try to tend to step down okay so as you could able to see that normally when I don't have any zero on my left half of the S prime the response that is being produced is generally slower so what I really mean is like I could able to reach to the final steady state value the, this is my final steady state value uh, which is bit slower okay so it takes some amount of time to reach to my final steady state value but the moment I add the derivative term the response or the total response has reached to the final steady state at much earlier in in my time okay so I could able to reach to the final state bit earlier so generally having a zero on the left half of the s plane generally makes our circuit to respond faster okay also one has to note that we have assumed that the value of this zeta to be equal to 0.5 and for which we know that the system poles will be complex conjugate okay and uh, i'm also considering that the minimum value of alpha to be equal to 1 okay due to which the factor what we had before this vd of d term which was basically uh, 1 by alpha times that of zeta in general has a magnitude that is greater than 1 so there is a kind of amplification term that appears in front of this vd term right and due to which there is a kind of magnitude that goes higher okay so that is the one thing that you need to note in this particular case okay so let me show you a better representation of this entire graph in this next page okay so as you could able to see the one that i have drawn in the green is the normal second order lti system where there is no, no zero in my system right and uh, the red one which i have plotted is nothing but the derivative graph of this v naught of t along with the factor that is 1 by alpha times that of zeta that is being multiplied to this derivative of our v naught of t clear okay. so due to which we have a, a kind of response that is that goes all the way to a magnitude that is closer to the value of 1 okay now when we add both these uh, quantities we get a total response which is defined as something like v of t and this is what would happen and now the graph that is shown towards the right reflects what would happen when we had a value of alpha that is equal to 1 and for the al value of alpha that has been increased all the way to 100 okay as you could able to see that the response gets degraded as we do so okay so having a value of alpha is actually helps us to reach the final steady state much faster but it also ends up having a larger overshoot so depending on your system specification you can choose a particular value of alpha that is required from this particular response so now let us discuss about a zero that has been placed towards the right half of the s plane okay so a zero in the right half of the s plane so what happens in this case is what we wanted to discuss so as we discussed before i can define the same s term and I can define an alpha which is a proportionality constant and then the zeta factor and then the omega n okay so the only difference between this definition of zero and the previous definition is that right now the zero is placed on the right hand side means that this term is taken as a positive quantity okay in the previous case uh, we had a zero and that has been placed towards the left half of the s prime and we did so just by having a negative sign over this particular term but as of now we will consider the impact of having a, a zero on the right half of the s prime by considering that the sign of this particular term is generally a positive quantity okay 
So now we know that again when we try to write the system transfer function, I can write it as something like So now again one could split this entire expression into two components. One is our normal step response function which is denoted as a naught of s and the second one is the area of s term. Now you could able to see that there is a negative sign that appears here. So generally what does it signify is that rather than adding the response produced by the a naught of s term and the area of s term which is nothing but v naught of t and vd of t okay so in the previous case we added both the response to produce the total response of v of t but now in this case we have to take the difference between these two expressions in order to create the response of v of t right so now what i can see is the total graph right now is being multiplied with the negative sign what i really mean here is the whole of this response would go in the negative direction so something like this okay and then it goes back and then settles back to zero and then it, it comes something like this so now when i add these two the green which is v naught of t with this negative valued vd of t term what happens is the total response v of t would right now become much much slower so it would look something like this okay so it would reach to the final state and then move something like this so as you could able to see that the response that due to this zero on the right half of the s line the response reaches the final steady state after a very long time so generally the circuit would respond slow when there is a zero in the right half of the s plane okay so now let's discuss about the impact of zero in the frequency domain and before that we'll also i'll try to reflect the same as i discussed before having a zero on the right half of the s prime makes the response to reach to the final steady state much slower than without having a zero whereas when i have a zero on the left half of the s prime it gently aids the system to respond faster so that i can reach the final steady state at much earlier time now let's discuss about the impact of zero in the frequency domain so as we can see when there is a zero in either in the left half of the s plane or at the origin or even at the right half of the s plane the magnitude of the uh, response generally rises at a rate of plus 20 db per decade in each of these cases but when we come back to the phase when i look across the, the zero when it is on the left half of the s plane or even at the origin generally the phase induced by these zeros will be plus 90 degree phase shift okay so any zero that i have either on the left half of the s plane or even at the origin would induce a 90 degree phase shift okay but the moment the zero shifts its location towards the right half of the s plane then it creates a minus 90 degree phase shift okay so the phase degree changes to negative sign okay so a similar phenomena happens even for poles which has been produced here so we have already discussed about it but still i will try to discuss here so whenever there is a zero either in the left half of the s plane or at the origin or on the right half of the s plane the magnitude graph the moment it reaches a pole the response degrees at a rate of minus 20 db per decade in each of the cases but when i have a pole on the left hand side or at the origin generally these poles induces a maximum phase shift of minus 90 degree okay but the moment the pole appears on the right half of the s plane what happens is the phase value of this particular pole induces plus 90 degree phase shift okay so which is exactly opposite in behavior with respect to the zero that we have discussed before so this is the response of the poles okay yeah so so with this uh, let me try to uh, talk about a general transfer function okay so 
there are some set of terms that are that are being placed at the numerator where i have zeros at the origin and some set of zeros on the left half of the s prime and few zeros on the right half of the s prime okay so whenever i have uh, these zeros uh, there is no problem until otherwise the right half of the s prime zero is not closer to the origin okay so this is not a problem origin okay so generally this will not uh, this is not a kind of critical uh, problem but still it might it might take our system to unstable but still allow having a zero on the right half of the s prime provided they are not closer to the origin but when it comes to the poles when we have a pole on the right half of the s prime then this generally creates a kind of exponentially growing sinusoidal wave okay so which in general makes the system unstable whatever type of feedback that we have okay so this is not always allowed whereas a zero on the right half of the s prime is allowed provided if they are not closer to the origin okay yeah so with this uh, we'll stop the discussion about the impact of zeros in the second part of the video i will discuss about the miller compensation technique